where did you go from um, from there, from being a, a handball player? What was your first coaching role as a strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, as I mentioned before, my first job was under 14, selection and development under 14. Actually, we didn't have competitions under 14. So we select the kids, we train them for two years, then the first competitions are under 16. And the sport was structured in three age groups, similar to here, under 14, under 16, and under 19. So my first job was under 14. I worked for one year and then I had to move to another city for family reasons. And I want to continue to play and coach again and approach the club. And they said, look, we don't have coaching job available. We have actually only one, the females team, the women's handball team, and they were elite team in the Premier League, and uh, then I had to make decision, but at this time I was 28, 29, mm -hmm. and it was a hard decision because I want to play, but I want to coach, but the offer was really too good to say no, and I said yes, and, uh, and I started coaching uh, women's team. And take us through that transition. Did, so did you come here with, with anyone else? Did you know any connections in the country? Like how did you, how did you find work? Uh, take us through that relocation phase. Must've been a fair bit of change, I imagine. Uh, no, I, I didn't have any contacts here. Didn't know any people. I got on Quant Quantus, I think it was aboard the Jumbo 747, uh, 74, yes, yeah, 7. And uh, I landed from somewhere in Germany, I think it was Frankfurt Airport, and I landed in Melbourne, and I loved the country. From the first day I left Australia, I loved Melbourne, and... Um, and uh, well, my first, my first job in Australia was in the fitness industry. Uh, All right. This was 1990. Well, strength and conditioning didn't exist, and we didn't have professional sport in 1990. Even football, well, part time. Yeah, part time. Mm. I used to go to work and then train after work night time. So strength and conditioning wasn't really paid job. Mm. But my first job was in the fitness industry and uh, I did lots of I work full time uh, in fitness center and I did a lot of private coaching. And what would be your favorite sort of slow strength based movements and then your sort of fast explosive work when you do the contrast, contrast training? Well, it depends. Uh, when I do squats, uh, for instance, I combine squats with uh, uh, tag jumps. Oh, yep, yep. Or jumps over hurdles, uh, power cleans uh, with um, double leg bounding, like uh, broad jumps, but uh, connected broad, continuous broad jumps, double leg bounding. Uh, I do a lot of, we did lots of push press mm -hmm. and medicine ball. Yeah, this is. Simple, uh, some clean pulls with uh, starts, 5, 10, 20 meters sprints. Oh, yeah, yep, and yep. We did lots of them when I worked with Melbourne Football Club. With the contrast training, do you want to explain how that how they actually would do that? So, and, and the, I guess the, the benefits of, of doing slow strength and then doing the explosive movements, but um, how would an athlete go about uh, doing it? Is, is it, you know, a minute in between drills, do you want them going straight from the lift straight into the explosive movement? Is explosive movement first, or is it the you know take them through maybe an example? We've done both. We've done. Um, uh, I use both methods. I do sometimes explosive first and then slow, and yep. but most of the time we do first slow and then explosive. Mm -hmm. Mix them. Uh, obviously if, if we do explosive before slow activates, uh, they're great for activation, activates the nervous system. What are some of your favorite drills 
for those either parents that might be listing of a younger child, um, that have some mobility tightness, um, or maybe some athletes are listening in that want to increase their mobility through their hips and, and back or what is, or ankles, whatever, you, what are your key focuses are with mobility for athletes? Well, pretty much every joint and we work on, you know, ankle mobility, hip, stretch, hip flexors, hip extensors, uh, low back, um, shoulders. Always for Olympic lifts, shoulders, shoulders mobility is important. Um, but look, I, mobility and flexibility is the hardest thing. And I, I negotiate and I start, start to negotiate with them yeah. <laughs> when, when they start at very early young age, I try to negotiate 10 minutes every day. <laughs> 